What's up everyone? It's Cloud Chief, and in today's video, I'm going over details about the ambuscade weapons. First off, let's jump into how to obtain these. Now, it's pretty straightforward for the most part. You pretty much just need a bunch of ambuscade points to make the weapon. So, you can make up to three weapons each month. To be able to fully upgrade your first weapon, you would need a total of 26,250 hallmarks. And that's how many hallmarks you would need to buy all the upgrade materials. The first weapon each month you can get from total hallmarks. Your second weapon to upgrade, you would need to again accumulate another 26,250 points, but you would need an extra 5,000 hallmarks on top of that to buy it from hallmarks for your second weapon. So that would be a total of 31,250 hallmarks to make your second weapon for the month. And if you are sadistic enough to go ahead and make a third weapon for the month, you would need 90,000 gallantry. For whatever reason, the costs to get all the materials from gallantry is substantially more which I don't exactly get because you're always gonna get more hallmarks than you're gonna get from gallantry so it is just an astronomical amount and you can obviously make the first two weapons much sooner than you could make the third one blowing all your gallantry on it so I really only recommend really making two weapons unless you are feeling crazy and just really want to do a boatload of ambuscade so on top of getting all the materials, which are nuggets, gems, animas, and matters, you need five for each upgrade stage. Uh, for the stage that takes matter, you also need to get what people are calling shiny weapons. These weapons come from older contents that Essie has decided that they should try and recycle and is used to get the final upgrade for the weapon. There are various different events that they can come from and it's not exactly easy to pin down what would be the best event to go for to try and get these weapons. So a lot of people are recommending New Nizzle Isle. I'm not sure how I personally feel about that. I've done New Nizzle Isle with a friend and we did it a decent amount where we got about 50 to 70 turn-ins, so somewhere between 50 and 70 potential chances for a shiny weapon, and we didn't get any. Now, granted, that's a small sample size. I would like to actually hear from people, try to get an understanding of what would be a good ratio, but considering it takes a half an hour per run, I can't say it is the best event, but it's, again, hard to say if it's a bad event either, just we happen to not get lucky with it. If you are going to go do Uncharted Nizzle Isle, and your goal is to get the shiny weapons, you want to make your goal to try and kill NMs. NMs should take priority one because that's where you're going to get the question mark items that you can appraise and have the chance of turning into glowy weapons. The other downside to this event I see is that any drops that you get you're potentially sharing with anyone you are doing the event with. So if you're going out there, say with two other friends, to really be fair you would need to get three shiny weapons to evenly distribute to everyone so that way everyone is getting one and it's kind of fair. And considering the drop rate that I've seen, I don't think I would personally recommend it, but hey. You know, everyone, you know, has their own opinion, and if this works out for you, then that's great. Personally, I think I'm going to look in other places. Next event that I want to talk about where you can get shiny weapons is Legion. I've done this about five to six times, going through and getting to the last chamber where you have the potential to get shiny weapons. And honestly, after doing it, it seems like a much better option than I originally gave it credit for. As of making this video, I have not gotten one, but considering the time investment and considering once you get to the final chamber and you get to wave 3, after you clear wave 3, it just pops wave 3 again. And it just continually pops until you either choose to leave or you run out of time. The faster you go, the more potential pops you have to get. So that is actually something that I feel weighs in its favor. I would probably stay away from this event if you are a new returning player because it seems to be more on top end. 
you really want to be going for fast kills so that way you're getting the maximum amount of pops per wave. So the thing about this event is you would need to go into each chamber and clear at least one wave to get a token and once you've done that for all four chambers you are then able to enter the final chamber but you only need to clear one wave so you can go in and clear a wave in like two to five minutes depending on your kill speed and then just move on to the next chamber that way it doesn't actually take that long to get to the final chamber and once you're in the final chamber obviously you're gonna stay in there to get kicked because you want to give your chance as much as possible to be getting the shiny weapons from the final NMs. A few things about the final NMs though in the final chamber uh, it is one giant demon NM that looks like Hamby, if you know what I'm talking about. And the other one is just the giant slime thing. Looks just like Zerd for anyone who's done Tier 4s. So from the little bit I've done this, a couple things that I would like to recommend. One, when you get the demon below 25%, he will cast death. So typically you want to make sure that you try and take him from 25% to dead as soon as possible. That way you're less likely to have death cast on you, which is only just going to slow down your kill speeds. It's not that terribly hard to do, again, if your characters are top end. The slime mob does astral flow, and you'll actually get hit by multiple like astral flow effects. You'll actually have like all the six avatars come out and all do uh, damage. But considering if you're 119, it kind of just tickles you a little bit. Doesn't really hurt that much, so it's not really a threat. Uh, the thing about it is if you kill one of them, the other one levels up and it gets access to a special ability only after it's killed. So from the experience that I've done, I kind of recommend that you attack the slime first, get it down to probably about 10% and then switch to the demon, completely kill the demon, then switch back and kill the slime. If the slime is killed, the demon gets access to an AoE 10 count doom and I think it does some other things. It's just a really nasty move, which is again, you, which is why I recommend killing him first. Just again, doom and death, just really bad things you don't really want to deal with. The Zerd mob can actually use a really strong dot that you can't erase. So just be aware of that. Make sure that you have ways to heal. Like when I was there, I was subbing Dancer, so that way I could continually just cure through it. And the other thing is that if you kill the demon, then the Zerd slime mob actually gets access to an AoE charm, which is why we wanted to push him low then kill the demon, then switch back so you have less likely to be charmed. Also, in Legion, you can summon trusts at any time. Even if you're mid-combat and one of your trusts dies, you can just go ahead and resummon them, which is why I think this is a half-decent event. Plus, you can actually make a little bit of gill off of this. Not a ton, but I was able to actually make gill while I was doing this, so that's another reason why I think this is a half-decent event. The next thing that you could do to get a shiny weapon would to be doing uh, Tier 3s and Eschazata. They actually drop these items, but a pretty low drop rate. I've seen people say you can get it in about 1 out of 50 kills. It's not exactly easy to solo or low man, unless, again, your characters are, you know, pretty decent. The pr other problem with it is you got to run back to the guy and get another pop and then you got to go get a question mark and currently at least on azura all the question marks are pretty heavily camped so you can end up just wasting time running around trying to find a question mark to pop it and some of the nms like the whale can do like a conal death and there's just can be annoying i've also died to the monkey at one percent because it's going ape shit from chain spell uh, so, I mean, you always have the potential of that, which it just sucks, and then it's slowing you down. So, I mean, while Tier 3s are definitely an option, I personally am not sure it's the best option. You could then go out there with friends, but then, if again, if you're trying to share all the pops, you got to get that many more pops. So, it is definitely an option, but it's definitely not on the top of my list. The next place where you could obtain a shiny weapon would be Meeble Burrows. And the thing about this is it's pretty easy content. If you are a newer returning player, this is definitely a good option for you to go and do. The chambers you have to do to be able to get a weapon are Assistant or Associate Researcher. 
you do have to go through and clear all five chambers every time you do it so after you've cleared the boss you have to go through and do all five chambers again and only the final chamber has a chance to drop the weapon for me it took about 20 minutes to clear all five chambers also i did happen to get a drop doing this but that was in only two attempts going through so it's a very small sample size i'm gonna go ahead and make a walk through about this soon arch dynamis lord is another option for getting a shiny weapon but i'm not sure that i would really recommend doing this unless you know you really want to farm him or you're trying to get marrows because the thing about arch dl it takes some time to get pops and then you also need to be somewhat high end to take him plus if you don't end up like being able to outright kill him from like 60 percent you always have a chance of wiping once you push him low and he splits shadows uh if you don't actually get the right one you're literally rolling the dice and you have just an easy chance of dying unless you are setting up to like skill chain magic burst it or you just have a good way that you can quickly just take off all his health uh, in one shot you run the risk of dying to it so i'm not sure that this would be something that i would recommend to do for shiny weapons the next event that you can get a shiny weapon from would be void watch and personally i think if the campaign is going this is easily the best thing to be doing to get weapons i've gotten from time farming rift dross and cinder somewhere between four to six weapons in doing it so while it is a low drop rate just like everything else it still seems like the best option for me the other thing about it is even if the campaign isn't going i just still don't see this as a bad option especially if you go as a group as long as you are capping lights just make sure that you are capping lights if you're not capping lights it's totally not worth it the drop rate is going to be complete garbage you need to be capping lights to be able to see a even a halfway decent drop rate and even when i'm saying halfway decent it's a very low drop rate on these weapons but the thing about it is in this event everyone gets their own chest this is actually one of the only events where it's not like oh i'm going with two other people so we need to get three weapons individually while yes one of your friends could potentially get screwed and not get a weapon where you get a weapon and then someone else gets a weapon everyone gets their own drop pull out of the chest therefore this is something that you could go do with 18 people and everyone has a chance of getting the weapon from one kill whereas if i go and do these other events with 18 other people we would have to basically get 18 drops for everyone to be able to potentially get one so that is one thing that i see in void watch's favor i could totally see you know you're getting a bunch of friends even if the campaign is not going and just making sure that you're hitting those procs and by doing that yes it's going to be substantially slower than when the campaign's going and you can just get outright kill the mob but again i still see it as something that you could potentially do to getting pulse weapons the next thing to talk about with getting pulse weapons would be from merit points you can outright just buy one of these pulse weapons for 25,000 merit points and while that is quite a lot of points it's at least something that you know you're going to get once you reach a certain point it's the only thing that you can put in x amount of time and you know you're going to get it whereas all of these other things literally have the potential for you putting in the same amount of time and if you just happen to have rng not go in your favor you're not going to get one i would say there are events where you were much more likely to get multiple in the time it would take you to accumulate but again you're relying on rng where this is not and it's not like you can't be getting merit points and contributing to that while doing other things and you know trying to get them in other ways it is just something else that you should be aware of also to be able to get a pulse weapon from merit points you need to have turned in items to be able to get access to be able to purchase it what seems to be the easiest is getting honors from legion since you only need about 36 of those to get access to buying a weapon other options for unlocking it since it really doesn't matter which one you have access to would be 297 crystal petrifacts that are obtained through various means of void watch or 12 simian horns and 12 daimonic casings that are obtained through meeble burrows 
And that brings me to my last way of obtaining these weapons, and that would be through Goblin Keys with Unity Accolades. The thing about it is, I honestly can see this being a really good way to get them. While again, you're relying on RNG, the thing about it is, if you turn in enough keys, even if you don't get one of these pulse weapons, you're actually going to make a decent amount of money. It's not uncommon for you to get like a five to ten million dollar item out of the goblin chest. And you could in theory, you know, be going and doing AoE, so you're getting goblin keys and you're making merits at the same time. So you could be making progress on multiple things. And like I said, with goblin keys, you're gonna be making gill eventually at some point anyway, turning in. So I could see just AoE farming, getting keys when you cap accolades and turning in merit points being an actually legit way to do it. But again, anything you're relying on RNG, you're relying on RNG, so you just never know what the results are gonna be. If you wanna check out my in-depth thoughts about these weapons and how they compare to each other and Remo weapons, then check the link down in the description. I hope you guys got some value out of this video, and as always, may you have success in all you do.